Hey, Clark Covington here from Heartland Community Baptist Church in Krauss, North Carolina, with a Bible study for you in the book of Jeremiah. Uh, I'm not going through all of Jeremiah. I'm in fact, just going through a chapter and a half here, Jeremiah 1 uh, through 2.13. Uh, and it's not comprehensive by any means. I'm just going through the scripture uh, in a way that might relate to what we're going through today. Because as I've mentioned in previous videos, the Lord has put something on my heart uh, that our community has really turned their backs on God and, uh, that they need to turn back to God. And so when you look at the book of Jeremiah, you see a lot of the similar, uh, type of circumstances where you have people, uh, men of God that are preaching the word of God and people not listening. And, uh, that certainly is the day and age we live in. Uh, if you're a pastor of a Bible believing church, I'm sure you could agree that sometimes you have a few seats to fill. Uh, and, uh, when you knock on doors and invite people to church or talk to them about their faith, uh, it's not the same as it used to be. I was talking to a saint of God recently that said, uh, you know, 15, 20, 30 years ago, uh, kids would be playing in the street and the, the, the buses would be full as they took them to church and parents would come. And, and, and now uh, it's hard to get parents to come at all. It's hard to get kids to come at all. And if the kids do come, they're only there for a few weeks and then they don't come back. And, and friends, we're living in the last days. We're living in a time where uh, our culture and society is putting things, uh, worldly things above the things of God. And here we have right in uh, God's word in the, in the book of Jeremiah, clear example of this from biblical times. Uh, and so this is a great example to look at in parallel to how things are today. So uh, with that said, let's go through a few verses here. Uh, I'm starting at Jeremiah 1. You're going to follow along right here on the screen. Uh, the words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anatoth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. So here this is showing time frame, context as to when this was. And in verse 3, it came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. So this is putting a chronological time frame as to when uh, this book was uh, written and what was happening at the time. And what was happening at the time? The Babylonian Empire came in and took Jerusalem. They took Judah, and there was a few people left over from that captivity that stayed, uh, and one of them was Jeremiah. And uh, the Lord had allowed uh, his chosen people, the Israelites, to be taken captive because of their sinful ways, because of their turning back on God. And so then here we have in verse four, then the word of the Lord came unto me, this is Jeremiah, saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So here uh, the Lord is saying that he knew Jeremiah before Jeremiah was even born. Uh, if there's any, any uh, question about life and when does life happen and when does God uh, come into the picture in terms of life, it's before you're even born, God already knows who you are. And guess what? As it says here, God had a plan for Jeremiah. God has a plan for you. Before we're even born, God has a plan for us. And you can see here that God ordained Jeremiah a prophet uh, before he was even born. He knew him, right? Uh, in verse five, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So God knew what Jeremiah was going to do before he was born. God knows us before we're born, has a calling for us. Uh, so I'll say right off the bat, uh, if you're for killing babies, if you're for abortion and you say, oh, it's not a life, uh, it's a life to God. Here it is a life to God. So clearly God cares. God created human life and he knew us before conception. That's a pretty amazing thought, but it's true. And it's in the Bible here. Okay, moving on. Uh, verse six, then I said, I, ah, Lord, behold, a Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. Okay, so here Jeremiah is saying, look, I don't know what to say. Uh, I'm a child in, in the faith or I'm not Moses. I don't have all the answers. But verse seven uh, shows what the Lord's going to do with Jeremiah. But the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Here God is showing Jeremiah, telling Jeremiah, look, don't worry about what you're going to say. I'll put the words in your mouth. You just go and do it, right? Uh, and so you can see here uh, in verse 7, but the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child. Okay, so don't say, I don't know what to say. I'm too young. I've got an excuse. 
for thou shalt go, right, an action step actually going to all that I shall send thee, the Lord sending him there, the Lord has a plan for him and he's going with the Lord's plan. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Here, Jeremiah is just speaking what the Lord has commanded him to speak. Um, again, plenty of men of God that are just speaking what the Lord commands them to speak. And if you don't like what they're saying uh, and it lines up with the Bible, that is your problem, not the not the that the, the pastor offended you because he's preaching the Bible. Uh, and I'm not trying to say that uh, that happens a lot, but to some people, they may have a problem with the preaching of God's word. But hey, if God told them to preach it, if it's in God's word, if it's scriptural, then we know it's what God wants uh, his people to hear. And sometimes what God wants his people to hear, it's not easy to stomach. And that's when you know it's truly from God, because if it's just tickling your ears, it may not be from God. Uh, let's go on to verse eight. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. So here God is telling Jeremiah, look, you're going to encounter a lot of people that are not going to like what you say. They're not going to like the fact that it's not politically correct or that it's not uh, in line with the times or that it culturally is out of place, that it's offensive, that's asking people to change their ways when they're set in their ways and they don't want to change. But what God's saying is, look, even though they're going to hate you and they're going to abuse you and they're going to detain you and put you in shackles and all these things. He's saying here in verse eight, be not afraid of their faces for I am with thee to what? Deliver thee. You can see here in verse eight, I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Friend, when you're preaching the word of God or when you're sharing the word of God or when you're discipling somebody, don't be afraid of what man can do to you. Uh, there have been times in my Christian walk where things have gotten uh, very tense and very stressful. And I've wondered, should I be afraid of what a certain person could do to me? And I remember scripture like this, which says, be not afraid because God will deliver you from that, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. This is Jeremiah's mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. And verse 10, see, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. So here in Jeremiah 1.10, we see God's plan for Jeremiah. He has set him over the nations, over the kingdoms to root out and pull down, to destroy and throw down. So Jeremiah is here to tell people, look, you guys have turned your back on God and God's going to send his judgment to you, right? And, and it's not going to be good. And you need to get right with God and repent, right? And when they don't do that, and when people don't listen to him, that's when things start getting destroyed and thrown down and so forth. But it also says here at the end of verse 10, to build and to plant. See, Jeremiah was also there to offer hope that God will restore his covenant with the Israelites because he is God and they are the chosen people. And we as Gentiles, we are uh, we are loved by God, right? We are we are um, all all uh, able to be saved and to know Jesus if we so choose. Uh, verse eleven. Moreover, the word of God came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform it. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot, and the face thereof is toward the north. Then the Lord said unto me, Out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. Verse 15, For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, saith the Lord, and they shall come, and they shall set every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem, and against all the walls thereof, round about, and against all the cities of Judah. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, who have forsaken me, and, who ha and have burned incense unto other gods, and worship the works of their own hands. Uh, verse 17, that thou therefore gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar and a brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. So here in Jeremiah 1, uh, really starting around um, uh, verses, uh, let's see here, 14 and, and onwards, uh, the Lord's talking about uh, out of the north and evil shall break forth and all, uh, on all, upon all the inhabitants of the land. 
and, and everyone's going to basically face judgment. Verse 16, I'll utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, all the bad things they've done. People that are living in sin, you think God will not remember it or God will forget it. Uh, friend, if you haven't repented, if you haven't been saved, if you aren't living for the Lord, God's not going to forget it and he's, he will remember it and he will pay you back for that. He is the righteous judge. So God here is saying he's going to utter his judgments, touching on all their wickedness for, uh, who have forsaken him, forsaken me, and have burnt incense into other gods. So God's going to punish those that are living for false gods, living for false idols. Uh, it, you may not bow down at a statue, though you may do that, uh, but you may uh, bow down at the altar of money, of prestige, of RVs or boats, of vacations, of shopping, of consumerism, of pornography. You pick what God you're serving. If you're not serving the true living God, Jesus Christ, you are in for it. Uh, Thou therefore gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. For behold, I've made thee uh, this day a defense city. So Jeremiah uh, is empowered by God to speak to the people and tell them what they're doing and how they're living. And it, it, if you look at that time, people were living wickedly. They, had, they were serving false gods, burning incense to false gods in high places. If you look in 1 Kings and 2 Kings, you can get some context there. Uh, the kings were corrupt and they were evil. The governments were corrupt. Everybody was turning their backs on God. The priests were corrupt. And uh, if you look at what's happening today, we've got wars and rumors of wars. We've got constant conflict. We've got religious institutions that are standing up for the word of God being called hate groups uh, because they aren't uh, with the world's uh, deal. Uh, they're not with the world's agenda or they believe in biblical things. So if I believe uh, marriage is between a man and a woman, I'm a hate group, right? Because I believe the Bible. Um, people that are killing babies with abortion are calling it a choice. Uh, media is just a total bastion of sin. TV shows, movies are perverted. I can't even take my kids to a to a cartoon because there's cursing in a cartoon. Who on earth thinks it's okay to have uh, profanity in a cartoon uh, for a little kid? What are they trying to tell them? Uh, what are they trying to do by putting so much homosexuality on TV? What are they trying to do by putting infidelity on TV and, and cheating and all these things? Uh, you pick YouTube, wherever it is. There is so much sin in this world today, and we look at ourselves as gods. We look at ourselves as the selfie generation. We put ourselves, we elevate ourselves. We tell ourselves that we can do anything. Now, it's all about pride, right? This idea that we are special and gifted beyond God or without God is totally a farce. Uh, society wants money and fame uh, more than godliness and goodness. And these are the touch points. These are just a few things that I've plucked out of the many, many things happening in the world today that, is, that has sparked God's anger. So I have Jeremiah here. I'm sharing with you what happened then, how the Babylonians had taken, it, uh, taken the promised land, the Holy Land captive, how Jeremiah uh, had stuck around and was preaching God's word and he was hated and abused. And we have that again here today in the last days where people are turning their backs on God's God and they're turning towards little G gods instead of the big G God, our, our true God, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, so moving on to remember when you love the Lord, uh, Jeremiah 2, moreover, the word of the, of the Lord came to me saying, go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem saying, thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love, uh, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness and a land that was not sown. Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruits of his increase. All that de devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families uh, of the house of Israel. Uh, and so um, here is a, it's really interesting. There's a little bit of scripture in the beginning of Jeremiah 2 where God's saying, go tell people, uh, do you remember the, you know, uh, the kindness of thy youth, the innocence, right? When, when, uh, when they went after the Lord in the wilderness, uh, and they, and they loved him and, and they praised him and they worshiped him, uh, and, and everything was good. Do they remember that? And that's the only, it's so sad, but that's like the littlest part of, of Jeremiah when, when God's asking them to remember, uh, what they did for him or how they loved him. And how sad is that? And in, in, in this world today, uh, you know, maybe when you're at the judgment seat and we're all going to face judgment, be clear on that. When you're at the judgment seat, maybe God will ask, hey, do you remember 
when you used to go to church? Do you remember when you used to serve me? Do you remember when you used to sing in the choir? Do you remember when you used to teach Sunday school? Do you remember those things? What happened? What happened to you, right? Uh, what happened in verse four of chapter two? Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the, ha uh, all the families of the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me that they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and are become vain? So here in verse five in Jeremiah two, God's asking, what what is what has God done that made you turn away from him, right? What has he done that ha has made people go far from God, that walk after vanity, walk after, again, the selfies, the look, the, the consumerism, the me generation, become so vain, so, so about themselves. What has God done to make you do that? You know, what has he done? Uh, verse six, ne neither said they, where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through where no man dwelt. So here, verse six, God's asking, people aren't even saying, they aren't even acknowledging what God has delivered them from. Of course, here is talking about the Israelites delivering them out of Egypt, parting the Red Sea, getting them out of the desert, all of these things. But where has, has God brought you out of? What has he delivered you from? I mean, he, he's given you so much, and, and yet you don't even turn to him and ask, what has he done uh, or, 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 or acknowledge what he's done? And so God's asking, you know, how come you don't even bring that up? How come you don't recall all that I've blessed you with, all that I've delivered you from? Again, if we look at people saying, well, why, why, does God, why does God care if people are living for themselves? Or why does God care if people don't go to church every Sunday or pray or, or sing? Or, you know, why does God care if they sin a little bit or get drunk every now and again or do this or that? Why does God care? Well, maybe he cares because he had to sacrifice so much for you and me. He had to send his only begotten son to die on the cross for my sin and your sin. Maybe that's why God cares. Maybe God cares because he invested in you. He knew you before you were born. He has a plan for you. And he brought you out of so much struggle and so many bad things for you simply to just not even acknowledge what he did. Maybe that's why God cares. Because it's it's a, a sacrifice that he made. And, and all we have to do is acknowledge him and love him and accept his son, Jesus Christ, as our savior to be saved. It's a free gift. And that's why God cares, because it breaks his heart. The people have turned their back on him and turned towards what? What did they turn towards? Vanity, walked after vanity, become vain. They've turned towards themselves. They're more in love with looking in the mirror at themselves than looking up to heaven, looking at God, looking in their Bible, seeking the Lord. They've become vain. Uh, verse seven, I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, ye defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. So the Lord brought the Israelites out of Egypt, eventually to the promised land and plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and goodness thereof. The Lord gave us uh, so much, right? And we are given so many blessings uh, from the Lord. And we defiled the land. We made the heritage of the Lord an abomination by living for ourselves and by sinning. And I think that God has a special fire and anger for those that call themselves Christians and live like the world because they are watering down the faith. They're watering down the things of God. The Bible says that if you're lukewarm and either hot or cold, God will spit you out of his mouth. He can't stand it. Uh, and that's what's happened in, in this day and age. If you're uh, if you're a Bible loving Christian, if you're in love with the Lord, you're considered uh, again a hate group or a Bible thumper or a, 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 a extremist. It's crazy what you're considered if you simply acknowledge the Creator of you and of everything. Now it's 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 unbelievable. Uh, verse eight, the priest said not, where is the Lord? And they that handle the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me and the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after the things that do not profit. So here you have even the religious leaders. Think of, think of the modern church. They have turned their back on God. They have left God hanging. They have not followed. They have not led their, 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 their flock towards the Lord to lend, to live righteously, to seek the God, to, to seek God, to walk with God. No, they have 
transgressed against God. And they have uh, the prophets uh, are, are working for the devil. Uh, they're, they're, they're walking after things that do not profit, which is a whole other message. But the idea here is that uh, there's a lot of false teachers. And, and again, how do you acknowledge a false teacher? It's really simple. Is what they're teaching lining up with the Bible? Do they even mention the Bible? Is it biblical? And not just is it biblical, is it, a, is it rightly dividing the word of truth as we're called to do, but is it also um, in, in action, in, 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 in how they live? The Bible says by, the fr- by their fruits, you'll know them. Are, are they producing spiritual fruit or are they just trying to gain? And when they're trying to gain for themselves, here in Jeremiah, it says that does not profit because that's not what we're supposed to do as Christians. Uh, verse 9, wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's tr- children will I plead. For pass over the isles of Chittim and see, and send into Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which, again, doth not profit. Uh, here in verses 10 and 11, uh, the Lord is saying, look, look from east to west. Look at all the other cities and the known uh, civilization at the time, and none has done as badly and has turned their back on their God as the Israelites have in this time. And again, if you look in America and you look spiritually at what we used to be, what we were founded on, uh, if you look at some of the early founders of our country, of the constitution, of the early presidents, they weren't ashamed of the Lord. They were uh, writing prayers uh, uh, to the Lord. They were making proclamations to the Lord. They were serving the Lord. It was all about the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now look what has happened. Uh, This we've gone so far astray and and we we have turned our backs so much. And we look east to west at other countries and what gods they serve. They they haven't done this. I mean, if they if they're serving a false God, they haven't even done this to their false God. But we as Christians in America have done this to our true God. And, and man, that, that really has to upset the Lord. Uh, verse 12, be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. This is really important here in verse 13. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out of cisterns, of broken cisterns that can hold no water. So the, the Lord here is showing us that, that we've committed two sins by turning our back on him. First, uh, we uh, have forsaken the fountain of living waters. We have forsaken the true reason we're alive. We have forsaken our creator. Uh, and that gives uh, him every right uh, to be upset with us, for the creation, not to acknowledge the creator. And the Bible, it says that we're acknowledging the creature. The creature is not acknowledging the creator. It's acknowledging the creature. It's worshiping the creature. We're making false idols. Uh, and then secondly, so firstly, we forsake God. And secondly, we have adopted false idols. And if you have any question about this, if you think I'm just some quack on the computer, think about this. What does society value? Uh, if you are, uh, if you love the Lord and you have nothing, are you valued by society? Uh, or if you are dirty and manipulating and conniving, but you're wealthy and you come from a big name, you have prestige, you have pedigree. If you're out there, uh, if you're out there driving a nice car, if you have a nice house, if you wear nice clothes, does the world value you? Absolutely. They'll probably give you an award. Look at award shows. Look at who wins the awards. It's unbelievable what our culture values. And again, Christians, true Bible-believing Christians are being repressed and pushed down and pushed to the side Uh, And just like no different than uh, the time that Jeremiah was living in. And you see uh, in the book of Jeremiah, this idea of repetition. So uh, I've just took some verses. uh, Of course, I won't go through all the book, but I've just taken some verses from Jeremiah and uh, that kind of point out this repetition. Jeremiah 7, 27, therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. Jeremiah 13, 10. This evil people, which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imagination of their heart and walk after other gods to serve them and to worship them, shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. Jeremiah 17, 23, but they obeyed not, neither inclined their ear, but made their necks stiff, that they might not hear nor receive instruction. Jeremiah 18, 12, and they said, there is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices and we will every one do the imagination of his evil heart. Uh, and then finally, Jeremiah nineteen fifteen. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, be, 
Israel, behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks that they may not hear my words. Uh, so, you know, bottom line here, we have turned our backs on God. Uh, we're not listening to God. If you look throughout these scriptures, uh, you know, uh, but they will not hearken to thee. Okay, Jeremiah seven twenty seven. but they will not hearken to thee, right? Jeremiah 13, 10, this is an evil uh, people that which, here it is, refuse to hear my words, won't hearken to me, refuse to hear my words. Uh, here it is, they, they were disobedient, but they obeyed not, neither did they climb my ear. Okay, so three verses in Jeremiah saying people won't listen. And they said, there is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices. Again, they said, there is no hope. Uh, they will do the imagination of their evil heart. Here it is again, they won't listen. There's no hope, they won't listen. And so here's God's response. Uh, behold, I will pr bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks, that they may not hear my words. So here God's saying, look, there's a time of judgment coming. And, and this is prophesied in the, prophesied in the Bible, uh, in the book of Revelation. Uh, the church, God's church will be raptured out and uh, there'll be a time of tribulation. It's going to be a horrible, horrible place to be. And uh, in heaven, those that serve the Lord will get crowns to throw at the feet of Jesus. And those that live for themselves, those things are said to be burned up in the fire. They won't hold. And so uh, we as Christians that have accepted Jesus, that are saved, we need to serve the Lord. And those that have not accepted Jesus as their Savior, you need to serve the Lord before it's eternally too late. Uh, Psalm 108, 12 uh, through 13, this is my last verse. Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Through God we shall do valiantly, for he, he it is that shall tread down our enemies. So, uh, you know, I think a lot of people, when it comes down to it, you have a choice. Do you want to seek man and get help from man and turn to man? Because man is there in the world saying, just follow me. I'll give you the direction. I know enough. I know everything. Or do you want to seek God? And here it says that God, uh, vain is the help of man, and God will do valiantly. He, uh, he'll, he'll tread down our enemies. And so he'll protect us. He'll take care of us. The Bible says, Lord uh, Jesus Christ, he'll never leave us or forsake us, uh, that no man can pluck us out of his hand. So God is here with us and for us, but we have to turn back to him. And if we turn to man, the Bible's warning us that that is vain help. It's not going to be good. So we have to turn to God, and it's time to get right with God. And I hope this uh, little study in Jeremiah motivates you to do that, motivates you to be on fire for the Lord, and I thank you for your time.